Welcome back to the channel, guys. Hope you guys had a good long July 4th weekend. Um, today, I want to go over wastegates, um, the different options there are out there, and how it works. As always, I'm going to keep it as simple as possible, nothing scientific. That way, it's easy for you to understand, and you can make your decision on what type of wastegate you're going to use for your build. Before we go any further, please like and subscribe and click that notification bell if you haven't done so yet. That way you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. All right, so wastegate can be divided into two big categories. There's going to be internal and then there's external. I'm going to go over the difference for you at first and also advantages and disadvantages to both. That way you can make an informed decision. Let's get started. All right, so I'm going to start off with the internal wastegate. So 99.9% .9 of the turbocharged cars out there from factory will come with an internal wastegate. Um, what does it mean to be an internal wastegate? Internal wastegate basically means you're going to have an actuator like this. Right? This is what they call a wastegate actuator. And on the exhaust side of your turbo, so this side of your turbo, when we look at it from the back, it looks like this. It has a little flapper right here wastegate flapper and then the wastegate arm um the wastegate actuator arm so which is this part hooks onto this so if you look at this picture so this is how the wastegate actuator is hooked up and as the name suggests this actuates under boost and moves by and it opens the flap and then closes the flap depending on what type of boost um you're running all right so with that said what it does what a wastegate does it actually regulates the amount of exhaust flow that runs into your exhaust housing of the turbo so let's go back a little bit and let me sh let me kind of go over how a turbocharger works okay so this part is going to be connected to your exhaust manifold right and here's your engine okay so when an engine intake air comes in Actually, you know what? That's going to be confusing. So here is where the air comes in. This is your turbocharger. So here's going to be a filter. And then off the intercooler piping, it's going to go into your intake manifold. All right. So let's keep it as simple like that. Basically, what's going to happen? Your air is going to get sucked in, right? It's going to get compressed. And then it's going to go in through your intercooler piping to your engine. You're going to have combustion. And then exhaust gas is going to come out. And when that exhaust gas comes out, it actually spins the turbine wheel inside your turbo. So exhaust gas is going to travel in and around and then come out the back. Okay, So it's going to go in, around, and shoot out. Now, obviously, as your RPMs increase, you're going to have more air going in. That means more air is going to come out. And when it does that, it keeps spooling the turbo to its maximum potential. What wastegate does is, depending on how you set up the wastegate, so usually there's like a spring in here, um, depending on what kind of pressure um, the spring can take. Basically, let's say you have like a 10 pound spring in here. So when your boost level reaches 10 PSI, and let's, your boost signal goes to the little vacuum nipple here. So when your boost level reaches 10 PSI, the wastegate actuator starts to open. And it will start creeping this, it will start creeping this little valve open. And when it does that, it instead of having 100% of the exhaust flow going through, you now are bleeding 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, you know, 70% of the exhaust flow so that it doesn't spin the turbine wheel as fast as it should, which regulates the amount of boost that's made because then the turbine wheel isn't spinning so quickly to a point where it's not boosting 30 40 psi anymore it's boosting 10 psi so that's how that that works it's a very simple concept by regulating the amount of exhaust flow that goes through the exhaust chamber or the exhaust housing of the turbocharger it regulates the amount of boost it creates on the intake side all right you get that right so with that said why do 
internal wastegates exist. The biggest reason internal wastegates exist is because it's compact, right? It sits right next to the turbo. There's no additional um, piping that's needed, no additional plumbing that's needed, and it can regulate boost, lower boost very easily. So you're looking at, you know, 13, 14, maybe 20 PSI, depending on the car, and it can regulate those pressures fairly easily with an internal wastegate without having too much issue. So OEMs like to use this setup a lot. So it's just, it's just a smaller, more compact unit. Um, again, easier to manage. You don't have to worry about making another um, ex exhaust pipe that goes out. Everything is compacted into your downpipe and everything goes through your primary cat. You don't have to worry about emissions. Like there's so many things that a whiskey can do if it's not internal that these are the advantages of an internal wastegate like i said one compactness two you don't have to have any other plumbing that goes through it three it works all right it works so i mean there's no other way around it it works and in low boost applications like i said anywhere from 10 to 20 psi or so these wastegates do their job now when let me explain to you how uh, external wastegate works. Let me clear this out. All right, so external wastegate, how do they work? So if you look on the right here, these are examples of external wastegate. If you look on the left here, the external wastegate actually sits on the exhaust manifold or the turbo manifold, okay? Uh, sometimes people will weld them onto the exhaust housing itself of the turbo, but I mean, as long as it is able to get into a position where exhaust flow can be regulated, that's where it's going to make the difference. And it has to be before the turbine wheel. So before the, so you can't do it on like your downpipe, you know, regulating exhaust flow on your downpipe is not going to change anything before the turbo spools. So it has to be something that regulates the exhaust flow right by the turbine wheel itself. Now, with that said, the concept of it works pretty much the same. There's a valve inside here. Okay, and then there's spring in here. And depending on what boost level it sees, it'll start to open. Get it? All right, so it's, it's pretty much the same concept as internal. But what an external will do is it will actually take that exhaust flow that comes through here and dump it out either after the downpipe. So after the turbo has spooled up, it'll dump it out into your exhaust stream back in, or you can dump it out to the atmosphere and by doing so, what you're doing is you're actually decreasing the amount of back pressure your turbo has. So let me actually pull this back up. So if you look at this, this was of an internal wastegate, right? So when this is where regular exhaust flow comes out. So when this is opened up, that exhaust flow joins this, meaning there's going to be increased flow of the exhaust in your downpipe which creates back pressure there's more pressure here than there is pressure coming out so it creates what they call a back pressure meaning your boost is i wouldn't say regulated but it's it's having a harder time flowing than if you were to do an exhaust system that comes out through the turbo and then out here whatever is being wastegated goes out and doesn't interrupt the actual flow of the exhaust here. Okay, so what happens normally is if you were to take an internally wastegated turbo and add an external wastegate to it and close off your internal wastegate, sometimes you'll see anywhere from 20 to 30 horsepower jump at the same boost level. Obviously, you need a retune, but the fact that the exhaust flow isn't creating another instance of back pressure after the turbo, it's almost like opening up your exhaust from two and a half inch to a three inch exhaust. It, it will open it up and it will give you that extra power bump and also will hold boost a lot better up to the red line because again, the back pressure isn't there. Okay, so that is the advantage of an external wastegate setup. Now, with an external wastegate, um, like I said, you can either dump this back into your exhaust stream, which does end up creating back pressure. But if it does it 
at the towards the end of the exhaust stream, then it's okay. You know, it's not a huge issue. Just don't do it right after the turbo because then it's it does still end up creating the back pressure issue that a lot of the internal wastegates have. Um, the best part, if you're looking for high high output, dump this to atmosphere. Okay, meaning it's going to have its own pipe that goes out and does not connect back into your exhaust stream. When you do this, like I said, you're you're basically exhausting all the access exhaust gas out through this pipe. Now, why don't a lot of the OEMs do this? Because one, it's loud. Imagine that. So although you're not fully using, you know, 100% of the exhaust coming through your wastegate, you know, you might be only pumping out 50% of the exhaust. That 50% of the exhaust isn't coming, going through your full exhaust system, through the muffler, through the silent, uh, through the uh, resonators or anything. It's literally a pipe that's being dumped. So it's loud. And OEMs can't be loud. And two, usually these piping is piped in after the primary catalytic converter, which comes right off the turbo, meaning it will be unfiltered or uncatalytic converted exhaust so it won't pass emissions like epa is a big no-no on that and three it's bulky it's huge look how big this is and it, again you need to have additional piping so that's why oems don't use it but for aftermarket turbo systems where you're trying to get the maximum horsepower external wastegate is definitely a way to go if you have the room okay so as an example as an example remember how i said Turbo kit turbos with internal wastegates that upgrade to external wastegates see you know normally see around twenty or thirty horsepower bump. So on a Genesis coupe, since that's one of our biggest uh, client tells, I'm going to make that example on a Genesis coupe BK2, so 2013, 14 Genesis coupe. It comes with an electronic wastegate, internal wastegate, um, twin scroll turbo. Like it's it's really it's really nice the way it comes. And what a lot of people will do is they'll do a stuff turbo upgrade on these. Stuff turbo meaning they changed out the turbine wheel inside and the compressor wheel and to make sure you know they fit the biggest uh, wheel inside the housing. And by doing so, they usually get 20, 30 horsepower out of it. But, but, if you were to take the stock turbo itself, not upgrade anything, just weld shut the... OEM wastegate um, flapper, and then add an external wastegate like this onto the stock manifold, you'll gain 30 horsepower right there. So the turbo itself is basically able to flow more, almost like a stuffed turbo turbo, by just changing the wastegate. Now imagine if you added this wastegate to a, a, um, a stuffed turbo. You're going to see even bigger gains all right so wastegate makes a huge difference when it comes to turbocharging your car and it's not only for regulating boost but it's to make sure that it reduces the amount of back pressure you have and also allows your turbo to be at its full potential instead of at its partial potential because of the back pressure and internal wastegate causes okay so I hope that helps you out understand how internal wastegate and external wastegates work. Um, external wastegates usually are going to shine in higher power applications. So anything over 20 PSI. So you're, if you're looking at like 25, 30 PSI applications, internal wastegates just not going to handle that. That's when you want to really go on to the external wastegates. And even in low boost applications, external wastegates still do have uh, there are advantages of not creating back pressure. So it would definitely have better results compared to the internal wastegate of the same exact turbo. All right. So, yeah, I hope that helps you out. As always, like and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And I will see you on the next one. Yeah.